Can we get Resurrection banned in titles for now on? Alien 3 is a bad movie. From all the flaws, the stupid decisions on and off screen, but Alien Resurrection is a different level. Resurrection should not exist. It's nearly impossible to make a fourth movie after the third if you cared about integrity of your property. Obviously Fox didn't, so they made a fourth one, and holy hell. I don't care who you had write this, good writers can make garbage too. If you've been following my other videos, this is the first Alien movie I ever saw. I didn't know anything about Alien, I just saw a movie called Alien Resurrection. It didn't have a number in it, so I thought it was a new franchise. I popped in the DVD and watched it. Some of you are probably curious, how did I react towards stuff that I didn't have any context with what happened in the first three? I don't have an emotional connection to things. Did movie four work any better? No, no it doesn't. Yeah, I was confused about rippling and details, but the story itself is just complete contrived nonsense. But I will say a few things about Alien 4. It actually looks like an alien movie again. We have spaceships and sci-fi guns and we have characters. I didn't really hate any of the mercenaries. I mean, they needed more screen time. They're the usual we're badasses, we're crazy, we look cool and hot. They're just in a bad movie. If they were in Alien 2, they could have been fine. This is by far the hardest movie to do a rewrite for. I was trying to think of any way I can get around the Xenos being killed off in Alien 3. I thought, maybe time travel, but then I was like, no, that's just gonna make this worse. I'll have way more plot holes in 3. But I did come up with one way. However, I don't like it, but it's the only way that it gives the movie a chance. Okay, a quick recap of Alien Resurrection. Set 200 years after the events of Alien 3, Weyland Yutani is long gone. Any survivors of the Xenomorph incidents are dust. We find out some secret company organization got samples of Ripley's blood from Fury 161, or Fury 16, Gridman incorrectly said in the movie, where they attempted eight times to clone Ripley, with the eighth one being a success, and also cloning the Queen embryo. There's so much to break down. The blood sample would have been fine if it was solely used to bring back Sigourney Weaver, but it was used to explain everything in the movie in the process of breaking everything in the movie. You have blood of Ripley, yes, but that's all you have. Clones don't get memories from blood and cloning would only clone Ripley, not the queen. Oh, but Josh Whedon knew this was stupid and tried to explain this by introducing us to that queens are able to mutate the host's DNA. For what goal? What we've seen from the past movies Hosts are just incubation devices. Embryos go in, they grow, they kill the host. There's no reason to alter the DNA on something that's going to die in a few hours, or days if you count Alien 3. The Xenomorphs are not the Goa'uld in Stargate where they use Jaffa as 100 plus year incubators. Thanks to this addition, Alien 4 further screws up Alien 3. If the Queen embryo is capable of rewriting the host's DNA, they should be able to control the host itself. The queen downloaded Ripley's entire mind, so why didn't Ripley go all T-800 in Alien 3? Or just stop Ripley from killing herself? Thank you, movie. Also, what the hell is this? First, you tell us that Ripley has all her memories because the queen downloaded them to her DNA hard drive. But then you have that scene where General Perez, who's being the voice of the audience, we need to kill the clone. She's just gonna go after them again. And the science dudes are like, we just won't tell her. So what the f*** is it? Does she have all of Ripley's memories or not? Like, did two different people write the scene? Am I having a stroke here? There's still more. Everyone here is all explaining that clone Ripley has the memories of original Ripley, but no one ever thinks about the queen having Ripley's memories too. Uh. That's where she's gotten them from. The movie acknowledges this one way, showing us that the Xenos are smarter, but no one thought, gee, maybe we should increase the security and resilience of these cages because they have humans' knowledge of things. Nah, next thing you're gonna tell me the cages aren't made for something that can resist their acid blood. So what else did they add into this plot? 
Somehow the cloning process was able to mix the traits of the xenomorphs into clone Ripley. So Ripley gains new stats like acid blood, increased strength, coordination, agility. In your pursuit of getting the perfect weapon, you created a new weapon. Why on earth would you bother with aliens anymore? If you're able to steal the things you want out of xenomorphs, it'd be way easier to just use humans. Why would you waste your time on uncontrollable animals? There's no time limit anywhere in this film. You're not in a rush. Put the queen on ice or kill it. What, what does it freaking matter? You finally solved everything in the eighth clone, so go and figure out how to get those superpowers from clone Ripley into other humans. This is why you don't play around with adding things on characters. Cloning also breaks more things. They finally got it working with Ripley 8. They clearly do not care about human life. Look at the room of failed clones. They just left one to suffer. So why did you hire mercenaries to bring hosts? And if you really wanted to argue it, you could use a dead body. Alien 3 and 4 keep feedbacking between their issues. It's even implied that the Queen and Ripley have psychic powers. She could tell what the queen is doing. Like, where did this come from? There's a difference from animal instinct, smells and whatnot, to knowing what the queen is doing from far away. Let that stupid flow to more stuff. Like those special enclosures that are able to contain the xenomorphs, except their acid blood. Um, why? That's their main powerful defense they got. Coupled with the whole increased intelligence? Oh right, I'm not supposed to think about this. Speaking of which, if liquid nitrogen can harm them, why don't they bleed at any point? Granted, they're much stronger than humans, but it's still pain, meaning the skin isn't helping. I just also love the scene with the two Xenos are ganging up on one. It's like, oh look, how clever they've gotten, except it would have been faster to melt through the glass and probably wouldn't have required to kill the Xeno. The acid would have melted that window faster. You'd aim it at the nitrogen button, boom, killed those dick scientists. Also, doesn't Gary's face get burned during the water sequence? So they can shoot acid from their mouths. They could have just done that at the freaking window. It's also made fun of when Clone Ripley does it. Her weaker acid blood attack is able to break through the ship's glass. That, that reminds me, most of Alien 4's action I thought was pretty good. But then you had this dumbass ladder section. They did another bullshit fake drama moment. You have Gary carrying Varese, the aliens right below them, shoots the acid at his face. Gary lets go, so Varese is holding him up. Jonner goes all Rambo, takes out the alien, so you have the corpse pulling the both of them down. So Gary's like, I'm gonna do a heroic sacrifice, cuts himself out, and falls into the water. Like, you couldn't simply flip yourself over? He burnt your face and one eye. You still had an eye in your arms. I remember this scene. The first time I saw it, I freaking laughed at how bad it was. I'm still surprised I went back to see the first three movies. But nothing compares to the end with that stupid half-human alien thing nonsense. You know, the movie had that constant pointing out that we were in space, don't shoot guns because of explosive decompression. One, that doesn't even happen on airplanes. We're talking about hundreds of years in the future. Hull breaches shouldn't be a problem. But also, most of the time, you're in the middle of the ship. You getting a bullet to even touch the ship's outer hull is freaking minuscule. But of course, this is all there for that goddamn stupid ending. Also, explain to me how Gideman understood what the hell was going on with the Queen. He made all these massive mistakes with the Xenomorphs. Not isolating them, not considering their intelligence, but he's being all dramatic and knows the Queen got a human reproductive system by just looking at her? Screw this movie. You took the elements from Alien 1 and made your characters do random crap so they can do some underlying parallels with Ripley that don't make sense, that you ignored everywhere else, so you could just get the queen out of the way and have Brad Dourif act weird. Also, how does the human morph get on board, Betty? It's freaking huge, and the little bit of the hatch that was open was way too small for it, unless human morph was kind enough to close the door. 
oh, this ending is so stupid. It even kind of rips off Terminator 1 with the whole baby trying to grab Call. I see you're trying to be the badass ending of Alien 2, but everything is over the top dumb from the baby being sucked out cleanly through that stupid window. I just love how the skull was holding back the air. F***ing <laughs> ridiculous. To the asteroid-sized explosion the ship caused on impact. If ships could do that big of an explosive force, the freak do you need xenomorphs? Just go ram planets with ship power sources. All this nonsense because they just wanted Ripley back in the movie. You'd think Fox would have learned to not interfere after what happened with 3. Now, I'm not saying the different versions Whedon came up with, having a clone of Nude, or the final acts taking place on Earth would have been better, but anything to avoid this bull ending, I would have preferred. Alien 3 is a damn mess but I gotta do a rewrite that works with it. I'm gonna be taking things from Alien 4, the mercenaries, the alternate ending, the time jump. That blood nonsense, goodbye. That stupid crap, no. And I'm also removing Larry, but I need to bend the rules with one change. You'll understand where I'm going. When Alien 3 ended, we lost Ripley. The Xenomorphs were wiped out. There was nothing left, but that's not entirely true. There were two things left over, Ripley's EEV pod and Bishop One. Ripley had scanned the alien queen, so that data is there, as well as the data Bishop downloaded from the flight recorder. That would have had the information from the facehuggers. Waylon Yutani took both of these things and got to work. But over the next few decades, the wars on various planets eventually went out of hand, lining up to Resurrection's extended cut of Earth. A rival company was able to take control of Waylon Yutani, going after the Xeno research. They constructed a special city-like ship locked in orbit of a gas giant hidden behind a black hole. The ship's main personnel were made up of mostly retired Ash and Bishop synth units with a few newer model units named Call, nicknamed the ABC crew. The security are the crew from the Betty. The company went out of their way to make sure connections to places were off the books. Over 10,000 attempts were made to clone either a functioning queen embryo or a facehugger due to the gaps in the data scan from the damaged EEV. Unlike in the original movie, all the issues like the cells not being acid proof and them using liquid nitrogen, the defenses would be changed into bursts of electric shocks. The entire cage gets electrified. They can't escape. Obviously my change doesn't allow Ripley to return to the movie. So I need a new main character. This would be the great, great, great grandson of Amanda Ripley, Jet Ripley. After Amanda's attempts at trying to find her mother in alien isolation, hearing the stories of crazy monsters through her, the rumors of Ellen being on some prison planet, working with people who believe in those stories and cover-ups, Jet was able to get mixed in the mercenary group, which got him on board the secret ship. For the next few days and lots of hacking gear, he was able to uncover information, the truth of what happened to Ellen Ripley, why Amanda Ripley wasn't killed. Waylon Yutani used her as a tool, a way to protect them. She could spout all the alien stuff, no one believe her, they'll think she's crazy, and they can accuse her of slander over the fact that her mother died of unknown causes. Unknown to Jet, the various people who helped him over the years to gather information on his family, they've been people working from the remains of Waylon Yutani. The Ripley family seems to never be able to escape them. They used his want to find the truth to do the heavy work in finding the ship's location. Not to mention the hacking equipment got implanted with a virus. It taking control of the ship's systems, eventually everything going down. Basically, the idea is that the virus takes control of the ship's communications, broadcasting on a signal Waylon Yutani's monitoring, gets its location, and the xenomorphs do a bit of house cleaning for them. Any weapons that interface with the ship's AI got disabled, so the only people who have usable weapons are the mercenaries. The ship gets overrun by clone xenomorphs pretty quickly. All the synths were remotely shut down. Jet's been looking through the rooms to find any way to defend himself against the alien, stumbling into the archives, where most of the stored data from Fury 161 is kept. Jet sees a mostly destroyed Bishop unit. Oddly, he found its AI core was in storage. That means 
it wasn't connected to father during the shutdown. So Jeff's next job was to find and drag a disabled bishop unit into the room without being seen by a Zeno. He eventually gets the AI transferred into the body. It comes online and the first thing we hear is, do it for me, Ripley. Jeff gets shocked, yelling out, do you know Ellen Ripley? Bishop's confused at his surroundings, seeing his body fully prepared. Where am I? What's going on? They both get into a long conversation about everything. What happened in Aliens and the stuff he knew that happened on board the Sulaco. Jack clues him in being nearly 200 years since you've been last activated. Some crazy <laughs> is going on now and I need your help in getting out of this mess. Now, Due to the system takeover of a father, Jet disabled Bishop's ability to remotely connect to the ship to prevent his body from being deactivated again. So it means they have to get to a terminal to find out what's going on. This is how they eventually bump into his old buddy friends, the mercenaries. It pretty much plays out the same as the original movie, but replacing Jet with Call's character. After all that, Jet and Bishop convinced them to work together. We need to figure out a way to get off this ship. Everyone was cut off from the Betty during the system takeover. While the ship isn't a part of Father's systems, Bishop finds out that all avenues of escape were closed and locked down, including several storage rooms. Bishop doesn't know where anything is since Bishop 1 overrode the AI of the old model, so the only option they have is to reactivate a ash and call unit. Ash units would have most of the information on the xenomorphs. Call, in my rewrite, would be the station's engineering units. She'd have security layout knowledge of the ship. So Bishop reactivates two units. Obviously they would be against this at first, but Bishop would convince them to live and get away from this hell. Most of the stuff done in the fights in original A4 would be the same. The captain dies first, they would go through the water area, but I would change it so that Gary goes out better. The way they beat father and the virus is use the three of their powers put together to attack the ship's AI system. Call and Bishop are dealing with the virus while Ash shuts down father. But because a Weyland yutani ship is approaching them, they set the ship into a collision course with Earth. The last change would be the final fight happens during the crash of the Auriga. It would be a small continuation of Aliens where Bishop gets some payback on Xenos. I would want also the movie to explore more of the synths. We would see it from the perspectives of the old models and then from the newer one, Call. All three of them eventually agreeing to erase all the memories of the Xenomorphs once everything is over with. They just barely survive the crash landing. The ship explodes at a reasonable size, but I rather have the ambiguous ending from the theatrical cut than see Paris destroyed because it would distract people from the final scene where Bishop could finally talk to Jet about Ripley before his memories get erased, losing Ripley for good. It would end the movie on a meager note, but I, you know, I think it would be fair to close it here. To some degree, I have to be grateful to Alien Resurrection. I saw the franchise because of this movie. It's still garbage. I just wish they would stop making them. All the recent ones have been stupid nonsense, going into bizarre directions, contradicting things with little moments here and there that are interesting, but don't warrant any more movies. I wish they would give it a rest, but we know that will never happen.